Hey Carrie, what's up? You wanna go on a date? What is up guys and welcome back to some more Sounds of Real Love. So uh, let's continue where we left off last episode. My pleasure, I've enjoyed it. Carrie herself blushes, though I feel as if it's more of an appreciative one rather than one of embarrassment or shyness. What were more important to it? Mr. Irwood, Carrie's father, walks back into the room carrying a plate in each hand, both of them tip topped with the same meal. Beef, diced potatoes, and a selection of vegetables, all topped with gravy. Even though neither of us asked for any, after a long but undoubtedly enjoyable day out with Carrie, I have found myself craving a nice meal. Maybe it's just a smell, but it's certainly something I can appreciate. This entire day has has led to me. This entire day, <laughs> this entire day has led me to find myself closer to Carrie, with her closer, with her closer to me. She wouldn't have thanked me for being her friend otherwise. Nobody else has done that. Though I've never had any friends myself either. Moving schools would usually worsen my situation. Though I've found myself meeting Carrie from doing so. There are no complaints. The three of us began our meals. Quiet, quieting down to focus on our own plates. The taste matches the smell. The rich beef complements the soft potatoes. Amalgamate on my taste buds. So, I bet you're wondering how a Walsh family came to Japan then. I wasn't, but avoiding this dining table talk wouldn't make me look good to Carrie's father. I hear that getting work permit is pretty hard, so getting permanent residence must have been quite a feat. Oh, trust me, it was. Originally, I was supposed to be to only be here for a few years as an engineer. Though I just found myself liking the place, so I decided to stay. It seems like he has a well-paying job. If you can afford a mid grade here, <laughs> if you can, <laughs> I, I, I find myself reading words that I know I, I know what they are. I find myself reading them like really weird. He can, I I said mid grade or whatever I hell I said it. It's a migrate. Come on, come on. Did I mention I'm still kind of sick? Let's let's go with that. <laughs> Here in Send Carrie to our school, he seems like a pretty nice guy, to be quite honest. Hopefully he thinks the same of me. To an extent, anyway. Being the guy his daughter has just dragged home. Home? Shit. I wouldn't want him to dislike me. More so, more, more so since his daughter is Carrie, making a bad impression isn't an option. Just as I am about to finish my meal, the sound of a ringing chimes through the walls from another room. A phone call. Mr. Uh, excuse me. Let me just take this. Mr. Irwin raises his seat, leaving me and Carrie alone to ourselves once again. It would be a rude thing to say that I'm... I am glad he is gone, but it's only because I get to spend extra time with Carrie alone. That is, Harry remains solid next to me. So windy outside. I thought somebody was here. Anyways, uh, Harry remains solid next to me, much to my displeasure. I thought it would be easy to come up with a topic to talk about, but right now, Carrie seems disinterested in my presence. A sad look coats her face, despite. It's beauty. If I could call it that. 
The fact that her expression has shifted from a once happy and content one to a to one of dissolute <laughs> <clears throat> Desolation is making me concerned. The cause of Carrie's dejection is soon apparent. The walls flow. Walls flows. The sound of Carrie's father. The sound of anger. I try to make out some of the words. Why is it my fault? You will, you're the one that decided. To, you're the one that decided to ruin everything. We have a daughter, you know. Have you ever taken her thoughts into consideration? My own mood plummets, taking in one word after another. This is the reason that Carrie's mother relationship between her parents has been crumbling before her. By the sounds of it. I really don't want to get myself caught up in this. I'm irresponsible, says the one who decided to get themselves shit-faced. Impounded by their ex. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, wow. The evening shit have not gone in this direction. Carrie's father is probably kicking himself now that the dinner had been disrupted. It's not very... Impressionable to argue with your wife in front of the guests. I won't blame him for getting carried away. Feeling a tug on my arm, I see Carrie's slender finger grasp my sleeve as she gently pulls on it, still carrying that same ex sad expression, the one that hurts me. I don't want to see her like this. However, what is going on between her parents concerns me. I don't want Carrie to experience that sadness behind the face of hers. Would listening for a bit really hurt? It's none of my business, but my heart is on fire. Let's go with Carrie. We don't. We don't want to listen. This isn't none of our business, and we don't want to stay and listen. And then she's gonna get all mad. Let's go with her. Carrie continues to pull on my sleeves, conveying her. Signal to me. One of the saddest sadness one of sadness and sorrow. She must want to speak to me about something. I rest my hands upon hers and I give her a nod. After which she stands with me and the pair of us leave the dining room for the lounge. Coming from the stands coming to a standstill carry Carrie turns towards me as we both remain still in the center of the room. Nothing but a small lamp illuminates the space. Sad. Mel <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck that says. My head, my head is all over the place. Whatever. Face. Melancholic face, an orange tint as she looks towards me. Please, forget about what you heard tonight. I didn't want to get you involved in all this. Carrie still looks towards me with those woeful, uh, woeful feelings deep within her eyes. Seeing her like this is really upsetting. What what we've gone through over the past several days mean a lot to me. I'll do anything I can do to make her happy, even if I can't resolve this issue. Harry, I don't want to see you like this. Please, if there's anything I can do for you. Please, just stop. Oh, shit. His voice is sharpened, as if it's... It's tainted with anger. It's complicated. I didn't mean to get angry. It's just her. There resents her mother. This woman must have caused her so much stress. This process of 
is painful for everyone. But seeing someone go through this, it's some it's something I can't stand. I wanna be there for her. Harry, you're not a you're an important friend to my Really? Yes, really. Okay. I'll tell you. Cat, that was easy. <laughs> just like you're an important friend. And then you just confirm that she really is, and then she'll tell you everything. You're an important friend to me too. Oh, it still sucks that you're just friends. <laughs> Follow me. He leaves me out of the lounge without giving me a clue as to where it is she's taking me. Clearly, she wants me to know more. She wants me to be there for her. Knowing that my words reach her, reached her, it makes me more ha more than happy. Carry a person I have grown to enjoy the company of is leading me towards the upper floor of her house. Our relationship has blossomed unexpectedly, flowering a friendship both of us cherish with nothing but pure passion. I can only assume for his, I can only assume she is leading me to her bedroom, an action which would be typically suitable for this situation is for me to get flustered over complicating things by assuming the most ra raunchy and far off situation. She wants to talk though. That I can tell from what we were from we were subject to downstairs. It's obvious that she wants to address it. Alright. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Sounds Ever Love. And um yeah, it's getting crazy. So something's something's going on with her mom and shit. And I wonder what she wants to talk about. There's a kind of a screwed up relationship with her mom, I guess. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, click that bell notific the, the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload videos. All that good stuff that YouTubers talk about. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Goodbye.